Hello everyone, in this video we are going to go through AZ900 Microsoft Recommended Practice exam questions with few key explanations and tips regarding memorizing keywords. I will leave the link to the test in the description below. I personally have passed AZ900 exam last week and I can tell you that the questions are the same or very very similar so much that and I that I can um, assure you that if you are passing those practice tests that we are going to solve in this video you are definitely capable of passing uh, the official AZ900 exam we are going to go through all 40 questions describing cloud concepts um, and I can assure you that all the answers are correct in the end uh, you will see our 100% score Question number one, how can Azure lower capital expenditure costs, CapEx costs? We have Azure Redis Diamond of Maintenance that is associated with the configuration of firewalls, which reduces costs. Azure allows you to reduce the level of IT staffing that is re required to maintain on-premises applications and services. Azure allows you to pay monthly based on usage rather than pay upfront for physical hardware. Azure allows you to pay annually to reduce overall costs that are associated with its pass offerings. So it's gonna be this answer right here. Azure allows you to pay monthly based on usage rather than pay upfront for physical hardware. This is why we want to use public cloud, right? So we don't want to buy um, physical physical server, for example, and we're gonna pay for for monthly runtime instead of it okay next question you work for a cloud solution provider one of your company's clients considering moving to its on-premises infrastructure to the cloud however the clients the client wants a better understanding of the different models before it makes a decision a third party will not be involved you need to describe the advantages of the different cloud models Statement. The public cloud allows you to deploy resources without managing the underlying hardware. Yes, that's exactly what we want from public cloud, at least infrastructure in infrastructure as a, as a service. So that's correct. The hybrid cloud allows you to deploy resources with no capital expenditure and minimal IT expertise. That's not true. If, if you have hybrid cloud, you still have some... Um, some on-premises uh, hardware so it's a no the private cloud allows you to deploy resources by having minimal IT exp expertise that's not true as well okay next question your company plans to migrate applications and services to the cloud you recommend for a hybrid cloud to be deployed why would you make this recommendation to augment on premises resources by providing overflow capacity to eliminate the need of company managed compu compute resources to consol consolidate all cloud resources in a single data center to ensure that charges are only incurred when cloud resources are utilized so it's gonna be this it, to augment on premises resources by provi providing overflow capacity uh, most common is um, bursting, correct? To consolidate all cloud resources in a single da data center, that could be made in public or private cloud, but they're asking us for hybrid, so it's uh, incorrect. Okay, so the first answer is correct. Next. you are planning to use azure for your company's cloud infrastructure you just learned that azure su supports software as a service platform as a service and infrastructure as a service offerings you need to determine the resources that are available for each category which res resource that each type of infrastructure make available to answer select the appropriate resources from drop down menus so let's see software as a service we have outlook and sql server that's obviously going to be outlook which is an application correct platform as a service here we have skype that would be software right and here we have 
Azure SQL da database. Most of ev every database in in this question when you're gonna see databases, they they always are considered uh, platform as a service. So it's gonna be this answer infrastructure. We have Internet of Things and virtual machine. Internet of Things is software as a service. Okay, it's considered sa on the same level as the application. Virtual machine, yeah, that's correct answer. Okay, so that's it. Let's go to question number five. You are asked about the differences between infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. You need to explain what each service type means. For each of the following statements, select yes if the statement is true, otherwise select no. EAS allows you to rent hardware and have control over the operating systems. Absolutely true. Platform as a service allows allow you to manage applications without controlling the underlying operating system. That's also true. Software as a service allows you to su subscribe to software. True, they pretty much definitions of it. Okay, so next question, Qu question number six. For each of the following statements about shared responsibility in the cloud, select yes if the statement is true, otherwise select no. Okay, the customer always retains responsibility of the data. Yes, that no matter what kind of service you're gonna choose from in the cloud, uh, you are always responsible for data. The responsibility of the management of accounts is transferred to the cloud provider. That's another thing that you will be always um, responsible for no matter which kind of uh, cloud service you're gonna choose. So as you know, the responsibility of for the operating system in, in platform as a service is retained by the customer. That's uh, not true. If it would be EAS, that, that would be retained by the customer. But in this case, it's um, on the provider side. So it's a no. Next one. Question number seven. Your company wants to know which cloud deployment model would work best for them. You need to choose the appropriate model for each scenario. Which model should you use in each scenario? To answer, select the appropriate models from drop down menus. Your company wants to create a virtual network with 10 virtual machines and no capital expenditure. So if, it, if there is no CAPEX, that's definitely no matter what we're going to see here, it's going to be a uh, public cloud. Your company wants to control the methods used to have high level of security for its resources. This highest level of security is going to be related to private cloud. Your company does not have IT experts or the money to purchase its own server. So it's like same as this is pretty much similar to this case it's, it's gonna be a public cloud solution okay next one question number eight to complete the sentence select the appropriate option from the drop down menu is the ability to restore a cloud service in the wake of a catastrophic loss so it's gonna be disaster recovery is it called yeah, that's correct. Next one. Question number nine. Which Azure resource can be managed as so software as a service? And we have API management, SQL database, virtual machine, and inter Internet of Things. So this Internet of Things was mentioned before, right? That's that is uh, considered same as any other application like Outlook and the Microsoft application. So this is software as a service. Virtual machine is infrastructure. That would be a platform here. API management as well is um, platform as a service. So next one, question number 10, to improve performance of a mission critical application your organization has implemented cloud bursting which statement describes the benefit cloud bursting provides so we have compute resources are distributed geographically to reduce the impact of power for connectivity failures additional virtual machines are added to and removed from 
a compute cluster based on workload. Cloud-based resources are provisioned when on-premises service with 100% resource capacity. Compute memory and storage resources are added to cloud-based service to, to increase capacity. When we talk about bursting, it's about um, this scalability, this uh, situation when our server gets full and then this bursting is extending to the to the cloud. Your organization hosts its e-commerce solution on a computing infrastructure that is provided by a third-party service provider and shared with other organizations. You pay you only pay for the compute power, storage, and networking resources you use. What type of cloud computing is this an example of? And we have public cloud, on-premises data center, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. Obviously, it's public cloud, right? Because we pay only for operations here. Compute power, storage, and networking resources to use. Next one question number 12 now in the infrastructure as a service cloud service model the subscriber is responsible responsible for the management of which two components each correct answer present part of the solution and we have operating system virtualization physical networking storage and applications so in infrastructure as a service operating system for sure Virtualization, physical networking and storage is covered and uh, application as well. Subscriber is responsible for the management of those two. Next one, question number 13. Your company suffers a catastrophic web outage due to misconfigured driver on a database server. You need to find a cloud solution that allows the highly customized web application to run without requiring management of operating system settings or services. However, the company's web developers must be able to maintain customization. What should you do to meet these requirements? Then we have deployed the web app functionality using platform as a service, migrate the web app to serverless compute, move the web app to a software as a service provider, relocate the web app to an infrastructure as a service provider. Right. They want to run without requiring management of operating system, so it's definitely not um, yes. But company web developer must be able to maintain customizations so it's going to be deployed the web app functionality using platform as a service here okay sometimes you, many parts of the question make a difference okay so next num question number um, 14. which azure feature enhances manageability and reliability by provisioning virtual machines instances based on workload and we have availability zones auto scale site recovery and serverless compute and the answer is gonna be auto scale right this is when the workload increase we automatically scale scale our uh, virtual machines to to be able to handle the the, the bigger load okay next one question oh we didn't mark it Auto scale. Next question. Match each statement which with the correct cloud model. To answer, select the appropriate cloud models from drop down menus. A company wants to deploy multiple servers to host web applications but wants to keep hardware cost and management costs to a minimum. The solution should be highly scalable. That's going to be public cloud because we have hardware and management cost to minimum public model and company needs to implement a solution where it maintains management control over hardware and infrastructure the solution can be physically deployed off-site so if 
it maintains management control over hardware and infra infrastructure can be only private or on premises but the solution can be physically deployed offsite so it's a private private model the company plans to use custom software as a service application and wants to minimize costs the company is legally required to maintain all secure maintain and secure all data on site so that's going to be hybrid okay next question question number 16 for each of the following statements about infrastructure as a service on azure select yes if the statement is true otherwise select no azure eas provides and manages container orchestrators no Resources can be allocated on pay-as-you-go basis whenever needed. Absolutely yes. You are responsible for managing applications and middleware while Azure manages operating system. No, in EAS, Azure is not managing the um, operating system, so it's a no. Next one, question number 17. Which two infrastructures are valid hybrid cloud infrastructures? Each correct answer presents part of the solutions. We have multiple private clouds. No. Private and public cloud. Yes, obviously. Multiple public clouds. No, that's still a public solution. On premises infrastructure and public cloud. That's correct. On premises infrastructure and infrastructure on-premises infrastructure and private cloud? No. So this is our answer. Next question. What is the advantage of moving your company's infrastructure to uh, Azure by using a public cloud deployment model? And we have legacy applications are easier to support. There is no operational expenditure costs. The company has complete control of the resources that are used by the operating system. The company is able to scale up as needed with no capital expenditure required. Legacy applications are not easier to support in the public cloud. Um, there are no operational expenditure costs. Definitely in public cloud you're going to have some operational expenditure costs, so this is not correct. The company has complete control of the resources that are used by the operating system. No. The company is able to scale up as needed with no capex required. And that's the correct answer. We don't need to pay anything up front. We can only pay on the monthly basis. For each of the following statements regarding security benefits offered by Azure Cloud, select yes if the statement is true. Otherwise, select no. Azure Active Directory is used to manage API cryptographic keys. Keys? No, we you need to use Key Vault to manage API keys. Uh, use Azure Storage Storage Encryption is enabled by default and cannot be disabled. That's correct. Azure Express Route is used to secure traffic between virtual networks. No, Azure Express Route is a private connection between your organization and uh, Microsoft Cloud. So it's a no as well. Next one, number 20. Identify which statements accurately describe software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. For each of the following statements, select yes if the statement is true, otherwise select no. The service provider is responsible for all infrastructure hardware in SaaS, PaaS, and EAS. Yes, no matter which one of those three, you're gonna choose the provider is responsible for that creating a virtual machine running windows servers 2016 is an example of pass no it's example of yes as well so it's a no if that would be a contain container it would be pass but vm itself it's it's considered uh, infrastructure only sas gives you way to give users to access to sophisticated applications in pay-as-you-go environment that's correct as well okay so we are halfway so far 20 questions out of 40 
So that was part one of the test. We covered 20 out of 40 questions available in the bank describing cloud concepts. The other half we will cover in the next video. If you guys find it helpful or have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. So I will continue making content that will help you to pass Azure exams.